Great to have you back in the second lesson of the chapter around rolling and talk. And before we go ahead and analyze the forces in rolling, let's understand what is the kinetic energy of a body which is rolling. So what we can say is that the kinetic energy of a body which is rolling is composed of two parts. One is attributable to the kinetic energy on account of translation motion or let's say the linear motion and the other part is the kinetic energy associated with the rolling or the rotating action of the body. So let me term this as on account of rotation. So we know that on account of translation or linear motion, the kinetic energy would be half mv square if m is the mass of the body and the kinetic energy associated with the rotation of the body would be half i omega square where i is the moment of inertia about the axis of rotation and omega is the angular velocity so it's a pretty simple concept when you have a body which is rolling it will have two components of kinetic energy one on account of linear motion and one on account of rotation so now let's go ahead and understand what are the forces acting on a body which is rolling down a plank now if you understand this you'll get a fantastic understanding of the concepts around rolling torque and forces so let's establish all the forces acting on this rolling body you can see that the force mg is acting in the downward direction and it has two components one is mg sine theta which is parallel to the plank and there's one component which is fg cos theta which is perpendicular to the plank and this in turn causes normal reaction and we call it fn over here then we also have a force of friction which is acting opposite to the direction of roll and and you must remember the fact that we are considering a situation where the body is not slipping down the ramp it is smoothly rolling down the lamp now to understand a little more mathematically what it means is force of friction which is static in nature is more than mg sine theta and therefore it is not necessary that fs here is fs max so the moment mg sine theta exceeds fs max the body will start slipping but as long as fs or the force of static friction is more than mg sine theta the body will roll smoothly so this is a kind of a condition you can remember that for a rolling body the force of friction which is always static in nature has to be more than the force which is acting in a direction opposite to this force and making the body roll so as long as this happens the body will not slip it will continue to roll so you, you must have noticed i've kind of repeated this thing a number of times in the last one minute but it's a very important concept while understanding bodies which are rolling. So now with this understanding, let's go ahead and write the equations of motion of this rolling body. So we'll write one equation which connects all the forces around linear motion of the body or the translation motion and the other equation would be around rotation. So first we'll write the forces acting on the body considering its linear motion. So we can say that if this is the positive direction of x-axis and this is the negative direction, then the forces acting on the body are Fs or the force of friction, which is which will be positive because it's acting in this direction, minus mg sine theta should equal to the product of mass and the net acceleration of this body in the x direction. Now you must remember I have written this as ax and you'll understand it's very important to differentiate the acceleration x direction and the tangential acceleration on account of rotation. Now, this is the equation for linear motion and we see no other forces on the left hand side. So, let us also write Newton's second law of motion pertaining to rotation of this body and we know that Newton's second law of motion says that the net torque on the body should equal to the product of moment of inertia about the axis of rotation and its angular acceleration so on the left hand side what we have to do is establish all the torques acting on this body and we can see that th there's one clear torque caused by the force fs 
and we can write this as a product of fs and the distance of this force from the axis of rotation and this would be nothing but r or the radius of the cylinder so this is one talk another talk could be on account of fg cos theta but you can see that fg cos theta is going right through the axis of rotation of the cylinder and therefore its distance from the axis of rotation of the cylinder is zero and therefore the product of this force with the distance would become zero you can also see that normal reaction is also going through the axis of rotation and therefore its distance from the axis of rotation is zero and therefore this torque would also be zero so the net torque acting on the cylinder or the left hand side of this equation would be just the product of static friction into r and this is equal to i alpha now we also know that the tangential acceleration a is equal to r times alpha now you must remember that this was a linear acceleration of the body while this is a tangential acceleration on account of rotation of this body so the the two are very different although we must remember that since the body is not slipping it means that the magnitude of ax and a would be same at all times now if we substitute the value of alpha from this equation into this equation what you'll get is fsr is equal to i times a upon r and therefore what you get is fs is equal to i a upon r square so what we can do is we can plug this value into this equation to find what is the value of ax but before we do that we must remember that ax here pertains to the acceleration of the body in linear motion while this a pertains to the tangential acceleration around rotation of the body so you you, you have to realize the fact that a over here is positive because the body is undergoing anti clockwise motion and we we associate all vectors with anti clockwise movement as positive and clockwise as negative but here you can see that ax would be negative because you assume this is the negative direction of motion when we consider linear motion so we will so to make this equation useful over here what we'll have to do is we'll have to convert this into ax value and make this ax value negative so we'll put a minus sign over here and then we can go ahead and use this equation up there and when you do that what you get is minus i ax upon r square is equal to minus mg sin theta equals m a x and if you solve for ax what you get is ax is equal to minus g sin theta divided by 1 plus i upon m r square so the main takeaway from this lesson is that you can treat the motion of a rolling body in two separate buckets one is a linear motion of the body and the other is a rotatory motion.